Good morning. Good morning. It looks like we are few in numbers, but it is Sunday and we are here to worship the Lord. Welcome. Uh, the announcements are prayer vigil, Bible study, Saturday. Remember the change, Saturday at 11 o'clock. The box is still available right here, uh, and I'm very thankful for that box. I use that from time to time. The Administrative Council board meeting is Tuesday evening at 7. And remember that next Sunday, next set your Sunday. clocks back next Sunday. So when you go to bed, set that clock back. Now, is that when we get an extra hour of sleep? Yes. Thank goodness I need it. But it's dark at 5 o'clock. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Are there any birthdays? Hearing none. Are there any anniversaries? Hearing none. Do we have any, any special music? Hearing none, let's turn our hymnals or watch the screen. Hymn number 580, Lead On, O King Eternal. Before we have prayers and concerns, we do want to welcome our, our little uh, person back to us that took a journey out west and decided Portsmouth wasn't all bad. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be back. God's in charge. There we go. All right. Prayers and concerns. Well, we need to pray for, continue to pray for Gail. Um. She is home, but, you know, still tired. And we, I'm just praying that this is taken care of it finally, you know. Uh, we need to pray for Nidra, right? Nidra, yes. not, it's, because her brother called her Nidra. See, I've always wondered, and her brother called her Nidra when he sang. And uh, for Candy, um, some of you, Neil asked me what had happened. Well, Candy fell on those lovely brick road down there. Out. She was going over to get um, herself a cup of coffee and a, 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 a workmate lunch and fell. So busted herself up pretty bad. So we need to remember Candy. And what a blessing the revival was. What a blessing. That was just that was just wonderful. Okay, how? Yep. I'm continuing to 
Okay, now tell me his name again. Rick. Rick. Okay. Oakland uh, is, or was, I hope she's home now for a few days in Cincinnati. An update on her. Heard from her uh, grandmother yesterday evening. They had to give her another round of strong chem chemotherapy. I'm not sure what the delay is in getting to Philadelphia, but um, then the kidneys had to wash that chemo out and it wasn't doing that. But thank God that they gave her something yesterday morning. It didn't help, but whatever else they gave her later in the day, it did flush her kidneys out. And Luke called and said that they were going to get to come home for a few days. So that's the good news on Oakland. Okay. Yep. Andy and Beverly Powell. Andy is a Portsmouth Fire EMT. Hey, yes. Have you heard anything from Andy? Angie Powell. Andy. 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 Oh, okay. Ever since that woman hit me and a, a little tiny woman used the jaws of life to get her out of the car, I keep, when you, that's why I thought maybe that was her name. This little bitty thing. You're a big woman compared to that little girl. That's she bad just, news. She just went in there and grabbed that jaws of life and just carried it right over there and did it. I was like, okay. Don't mess I could, with her. I couldn't get out of the car. The woman's car was had me blocked in. I couldn't get out. But that, she was one strong little lady there. Beth just told me that Andy hasn't had his transplant yet. Andy Cremines, we need to remember him in our prayers. Andy Cremines? Yes. So we got two Andys. That's kidney, right, Beth? For kidney transplant. And Steve Mennery uh, has his appointment tomorrow, and he will learn whether or not he is a candidate for a procedure on his kidneys. Please pray that he is a candidate. If that were to work for him, he wouldn't have to have a transplant. Okay. Steve Minnery. Yeah. Scott Lewis. Yep. I pray for him every night. I pray for him every yep. night. Well, I, I underline Carolyn's name there. Um, Richard, Richard and Mary. I'd like to lift up Rick how, Rick's how to you, RJ. Yeah. He is um, something that he, he needs our prayers. Yes, he does. Um, RJ needs our prayers. He does an awful lot. I'm afraid he's going to burn himself out. You know, because uh, that's a lot. Dreama, that's the young woman that we've talked about. Okay. I want to say I have a Thanksgiving for our revival and all the singing, and I'm thankful Carl is here. Yeah. Oh, uh oh, she's going to tell on you. I love Carla. She, she don't know what she needs to make. I, I love Carla. We have a committee over there, and Carla is our, she takes our notes all the time when we have a meeting, and she's just fantastic. I just, I think you're great. <laughs> well, I told her, I said, it's good to see you again. Hadn't seen you except on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm <laughs> so thankful for Terry Joe. I'm so glad to see her. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was quite a blessing. That's quite a blessing. And I'm going to say it again. If we ever sang hymns that weren't According to what I was preaching on, I think I'd fall out of there. Thank you. Thank you for listening to God's voice. Thank you. You're welcome. I try. I'm serious. It's just 
when we sing that second verse. I'm using today as All Saints Day. It's really tomorrow, but and um, well, let me let me get them words again. Yeah, lead on. Okay. Okay. Till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. Amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums. I hope we're stirred. Amen. Greg, we always need to remember our prayer list that's in our bulletin. Yes. 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 Yep. Most of these hymns will preach. You could you could just use the hymn as a sermon. And uh, huh? I call them many sermons. Yep, that's right. That's right. When they sang Holy Ground the other night, it was just you could hear you could feel the Jesus Holy Ground. We're standing on the Holy Ground. That's right. Okay, anybody else? Continue to remember Leonard Gamble. I think he's home. I'm not totally sure, but. Leonard? Leonard Gamble. Okay. And how's that baby? Well, it's not born yet, but. Is, is, is it doing okay? Yes. Do they know if it's a boy or a girl yet? Uh, I think it's a girl. I think it's a girl. Gosh, two little girls. Yeah. <clears throat> Kathy's coming back. Okay. Need traveling mercies for Kathy. Okay. Anybody else? not let's go to prayer gracious God our heavenly father we thank you for the privilege of being here in this house of worship Lord we uh, have many requests and we lift them to you and Gail and Nidra Candy and Leonard and Ida and Rick with those tumors. Little Oakland, Lord. These two Andes. Um, and we ask you to be with, with them. And with that, especially Andy with that kidney situation. Steve Minery. And Scott, Lord. Touch his heart and mind. Come Holy Spirit and touch him in a way that nothing else can. Just speak to him. We pray for Richard and Mary. For Dreama. We lift her up. And we pray for RJ. He's a busy young man. We... Uh, Pray for Sam and Linda. Yes. As Linda has to wait till the 6th of January to find out anything. And we pray for Carolyn. We just ask you to be with her. And uh, how I miss her, Lord. We pray for, uh, Dave, continue to pray for Dave Cox. And um, the captives in Haiti. And Lord, wherever there are persecuted Christians, be with them. Keep them safe. We thank you, Lord, that um, at least I haven't heard of anybody, any little ones being injured on, with their trick-or-treat night. But um, we just thank you again. We love you. 
We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Be in our presence as we know you are. For it's in your beautiful, loving name, the name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our tithes and offerings. Well, that's the heavy one. It's got two checks in it. <laughs> Gracious God, we pray that you would anoint and use these offerings, these tithes, these gifts for your glory. Here, in this community, and around the world, and we'll continually give you praise and glory. For it's in your beautiful, precious, strong name that we pray. And amen. And amen. At this time, we will sing hymn number 701, When We All Get to Heaven. <clears throat>
All right, our uh, responsive reading is on page 813, and it's the five verses we're going to do here. The Lord reigns and is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed and is girded with strength. The Lord has Your throne has been established from of old. You are from everlasting. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Okay. Okay, it is five twenty eight, but it's okay. Morning. Today's reading is from Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. And he lifted up his eyes and his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the king, kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spur your name as evil on account of, of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is greater in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolations. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs for you, from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish, the others will do to you, so do to them. Thank you. Oh, oh tell you, this getting old stuff, I don't know. Well, good morning, saints. I'm surprised. They actually answered me. I figured it out. I think a lot of people struggle with being called saints because they don't know what a saint is. We're going to talk about that today. One day there was a man walking through a beautiful church building and with his four-year-old son. And they walked, you know, they were walking around the church. And um, the little boy looked around and he was curious about the beautiful stained glass windows. And he said, who are those people in the windows, Daddy? Oh, they're, they're saints. What are saints, Daddy? And now the father was stuck. How are you going to explain to a four-year-old what a saint is? But the, the young boy broke the silence, shouting, Ooh, I know who the saints are. They're the people that the light shines through. They're the people who the light 
shines through. Did you catch that? Saints, did you catch that? Let the light shine through you, saints. You know, most of us think about a saint like being St. Jude or St. Francis or Mother Teresa. You know, a foul back, you know. But the Bible tells us a saint simply a follower of Jesus. You follow Jesus? Are you, are you following Jesus this morning? Amen. All right. Guess what? You're a saint. Huh. Now, you know, the Bible says anybody born again by the Holy Spirit is a saint. They were called. They were called. You are called. Holy. Did that bother you a little bit more? <laughs> Being called holy? They were, they were dedicated. Extremely dedicated. Most gave their life. For being born again. Huh. But guess what? They were still human. Real people. And they were far from perfect. Is, is that why you struggle, maybe? Because you're not perfect? You struggle with, with being called holy or being called a saint because you're not perfect? Hmm. You know, think about it. The disciples, fishermen, farmers, tent makers, doctors, teachers, outcasts. And they weren't infallible. They weren't perfect. Just people following Jesus. And learning to be more like him more and more like Jesus. That's my prayer for all of us. To become more and more like Jesus. Even when we have 165 children <laughs> come begging for candy. But to become more loving less judgmental, and more accepting of others, and less condemning. Step on some feet. Yep. Jesus is perfect. His followers are not. Step it on my feet. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, Now we see a reflection in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way I have been completely known. Ooh. Oh God, I don't want you to completely know me. I don't want you to see those things that are inside of me. Stop it. Just think of all the mistakes that the Apostle Peter or James or John made. But they learned 
from Christ, allowing him to forgive them. Think about, think about how radically we as Christ followers, saints, are called to live. The gospel lesson that Mark read this morning says, love your enemies. Do you? I'm trying to get my feet out of the way. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. See, anybody have anybody that hates them? <laughs> Do good to them. Pray for those who mistreat you. Now, I wouldn't dare slap uh, Frank back there on the face. I'm afraid he'd slap back. But what does it say? If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If somebody takes your coat, give them your shirt too. Give to everyone who asks and don't demand your things back from those who take them. You know, I'm not saying, here, you look cold here, my jacket. No, take them. If they've taken it from you, they've stolen from you, don't demand them back. Treat people the same way that you want to be treated. Anybody always do that? I never see hands go up. I don't get it. And if we're going to read, if we were to read further, we'd find that we're also called to lend, expecting nothing in return. Be kind to ungrateful people. We're called to be compassionate, just as God is compassionate. Anybody in here as compassionate as God is? <laughs> I'm going to have to get, I'm sure I'm going to have to get me a, some uh, shoe polish. I'm going to have to get me some shoe polish from stepping on my toes this morning. We're not to judge. We're not to condemn. Anybody here like that all the time? You have somebody come in with tattoos all up and down their arms and their hands. And what if they walked in the door? How would we treat them? You know. Maybe he says love on these four fingers and hate on those four fingers. How would we treat them, church? And still, God calls us saints. You know, in both Greek and Hebrew, Saint has the same definition. Someone who is sacred, holy, pure. Well, I'm trying to get them out of the way. Blameless, dedicated. And the word holy doesn't mean perfect. It means set apart. Set apart to serve God. You have been bought. You're not your own. Now, 
The only way people, even Jesus' followers, can be pure and blameless is through the blood of Jesus that not only covers our sin, but washed away the sin. And there's a difference. You know, my belly has been getting bigger. It's, Karen told me why. I, know, I knew why, but she told me why. It's my, uh, my liver. And I hold water. And she goes, yeah, you can always tell if it's just a fat belly or... <laughs> Oh, thanks, Karen. But, um, you know, yes, a saint is dedicated. But a saint sometimes falls down. But they get back up. They may fall into sin. They might lose their temper. They might hurt somebody in, in word or deed. Now I know Beth, you never, you never have any struggle with that when people come in to the office and don't do a thing that you, yeah, she goes, zip her mouth. I, I know, that's what you got to do. You just got to swallow it. But God's forgiveness, a saint asks for God's forgiveness And accepts that forgiveness and then asks God to strengthen them and grow in love. That's what it means to be dedicated. And we may not always love our enemies, but that's the goal. Saints, if you can't love your enemies, then ask for God's love to overcome that anger. Ask for God to overcome that anger and hatred. When I, when I was typing that word hatred, ooh, that just, it just hit me. Hatred. When you find it difficult to pray for those who mistreat you, Yeah. Pray for him anyway. If a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ finds it nearly impossible not to judge, admit, admit that to God and ask him to enable you saints not to judge. Ask Him to, to help us love everybody no matter who they are or what they look like or how they live their life. And because dedicated followers of Jesus are called to turn the other cheek and if somebody takes their coat, give them their shirt as well, don't demand special rights. Don't expect special privilege. Yeah, I know this kind of lifestyle is as radical as it can get. And nobody gets it completely right. And if we begin to think that we're getting it right, we've already got it wrong. Did you hear that? If we start thinking we've got it right, we've got it wrong. Luke 14, 11 reads, All who exalt themselves will be what? Humbled. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And pride comes before the fall. Wow. 
That sounds impossible, doesn't it? It is. It's impossible. Verse 20 says that Jesus raised his eyes to his dedicated disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor because God's kingdom is yours. Anybody poor in here? We're rich. We're rich beyond compare. Because we have the kingdom of God waiting for us. Happy are you who are hungry. And I don't mean no, you know, you just can't wait to get out of here and get to Bob Evans. That ain't what I'm talking about. Food was a, you know, we talk about food uh, insecurity in our country, even in our country. Food insecurity, let me tell you, back then it wasn't insecure. It was, man, I hope I can get something to eat today. You know, it was, it was a big deal. Happy are you who weep now. But how terrible it is for you who are rich because you've already received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now because then you'll be hungry. Jesus just come in and turned everything upside down. Could it be that what it comes down to is that being financially secure, having a full stomach, you know, they're not necessarily bad, but they can be deceptive. They're, that's temporary. Prosperity can actually get in the way of our relationship to God. Hmm. Stealing our love for God. It's true. I don't need God. I've got everything I need. I've got everything I need. I don't know what that is. It's different for every person, I guess. To be truly happy, to be blessed, is to have a relationship with God that's not in jeopardy. Self-sufficiency traps us. It separates us from God. Those who lay up treasures for themselves, you're not rich. Not toward God. We are blessed, happy, when we rely solely on the mercy and the love of God from whom all good things have come. What, am, what are you saying, preacher? <laughs> Happiness comes when we rely totally on God. Then we're more loving more compassionate, less judgmental. When we love Christ more, we can love others the best. When we love Christ more, we can love others the best. A saint is someone who life makes it easier to believe in God. Ever known somebody like that? Yep. If we hadn't, I doubt if we'd be here. Most of us, if not all of us, were given um, our first glimpse of Jesus 
through one of his saints. My, maybe it was your mom and dad. I, I, you know. Maybe it was a neighbor. A school teacher. A friend. Maybe it was a pastor. Or a member of the church. Her Sunday school teacher. Whoever it was, there was something about them. Something that separated them from the rest of the crowd. Something that intrigued us and caused us to want to be one of them people. Those who went the extra mile. They were the people that we knew we could count on no matter what. The ones who made us feel loved and gave given a glimpse of the divine. One day a, a minister told his paper boy, you know, I'm the pastor of the Methodist Church just down the street, and we don't have anyone to hand out bulletins on Sunday. You know, I wonder if you'd be willing to come and hand out bulletins. This totally unchurched little boy was amazed. He'd never even been in a church let alone hand out bulletins. But he was honored that this man had asked him. So yeah, well, I'll give it a shot. And this invitation to hand out bulletins at a, at a Methodist church turned out to be the change, the changing point in that boy's life. He met and was befriended by the dear saints of the church. They loved him. They took him under their wing. They became family to him and taught him about the love of Jesus. Not only taught him about it, but they loved him with the love of Jesus. This boy, is Bob was his name. He ended up going to seminary. And had a lifelong ministry of loving others into the kingdom. Bob and so many others like him have put their full trust in the Lord. And given their complete lives to him in service in dedication and they've experienced more out of life than they ever could have begun to imagine and because of this they've passed this fullness of life to others. You're, st you're not hearing me because you're still back on the one, you're still back thinking about the one, that, the saint who shared the goodness, the love of Jesus. Saints were also to pass that fullness of life on to others. We're to be people to whom God's light shines.
Who are the saints who've touched your life with the incredible love of Christ? Might be members of this congregation. They might have passed on. But we're left to let Christ's light shine. To let, just like that little boy said, what a saint was. To let the, the love of God shines through. The light shines through. We're all called to be saints. People dedicated to God so that the light of Christ might shine through our lives, through our words and our actions. We're going to close it with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for saints. Someone through whom we could catch a glimpse of what God is like and what we're called to be. No, not perfect, but someone through whom God tells His story. The light to a dark, lonely, lonely world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. Okay, our closing hymn. Now tell me again, Nancy. 526. Okay, let's stand to sing. If there's anyone 
who hasn't become a saint, who hasn't accepted the blood of Jesus, let this be that day. Amen. Don't not one more day pass until you've accepted that love, that grace, that mercy. And now receive this, the benediction. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. And amen.